Hello everyone, this is Damon with PixNub Software, and this is just a quick video to go over the new image extract HTML panel from PixNub. Now this replaces the old um, image extract filter, so it's no longer under the filter menu. I'm actually going to show you how to access this, so I'm going to close this. You'll find that under the window, extensions, and then image extract, all HTML panels are under the extensions menu, and a lot of the um, new PixNub development will be going to these HTML panels. And so by default it's not going to put it right there. It's actually typically going to dock it and it'll open up just like this. You can move this wherever you want. Personally I like to dock it inside of the Photoshop um, workspace. And I've got it next to Easy Green Screen in its own tab. I've also got my own workspace made. And you can save your own workspaces. Once you set something up, you can save that as a workspace so you can easily access that setup. So the big difference that you'll notice with an HTML panel is that you have access to both the panel and to Photoshop. So you see we're in Photoshop here. We can paint, we can do things. And that's not taken away from the um, access to the panel at the same time. So this has broken out step by step for you because this is not a one click extraction like Easy Green Screen. It's actually not possible for white screen. At least I don't think it is. I've tried for a long time to make a one click extraction. But in any case, um, it's pretty simple. Now the first thing you have to do is step one and this is going to do the select subject. You've got two options. You can define the hair area and do the select subject or just run the select subject. Now if you have hair, I highly recommend doing the define hair area. But if you select that, you see it's going to tell you you need to make a lasso selection first. So you can either use one of these buttons to grab your Photoshop tools or you can go right in the Photoshop menu and grab it. These buttons do the same thing. It's just I thought they were handy to put the buttons right here in the, um, in the panel itself. So then you just grab the parts of the hair that you want to have treated the edges differently to where they're more feathered than the rest of the image. And then once you're happy with that, you hit um, Define Hair Area and Select Subject. And this will take a couple of seconds. Now you see it's done the Select Subject. Now this is doing the exact same thing as if you were to run Select Subject in Photoshop. Other than with this Define Hair Area, it also built a, an alpha channel with that hair selection you made because it's going to use that later when it's doing the extraction process. So the next thing you want to do is to refine this selection. And what select subject, it's, it's good for making a rough selection, but it, it's not always perfect. And in this case, it's not. And a common thing it does is this area between the elbow and the body, it often includes that as part of the subject. So I'm just going to grab the magic wand here and you can use any tool you want but I'm going to use the magic wand here and with the magic wand make sure your tolerance is set to something you want. 32 for this should be fine. Also typically you want to use contiguous. So I'm going to use the alt key on Windows or option on Mac. If you just go through and deselect some of these areas so they're not part of the subject I chose an image with pom-poms here because I wanted something that I could show where we'd have to go in and make some selections. And then also you can use the Add to Selection with the Shift key. I think that looks good enough. And the next thing is to do the Remove Background. Now if you watch the layer panel here, there's lots of stuff happening. This is actually a pretty advanced edge cleanup system that it's doing, or sequence that it's doing. But it's going to save you a lot of time because it's going to clean the edges up for you pretty well. So if you look in here, now by the way it takes us into the select and mask panel. But you can see that the um, edges are actually pretty good for the um, skin and the clothing. Now it did mess the pom-pom up a bit and you can go in and touch some of these things up with the paintbrush tools. So you could paint some of this on as needed. Or you could use the um, refine brush tool if you think that might help. And this um, 
Select a mask is not a perfect tool in Photoshop, but it can get you something that looks pretty decent. And you notice that this background piece wasn't removed here because that was actually included as part of the initial selection, but we've got a refine brush here. Now one thing too is that um, by default this puts it against black because that's going to be worst case. You can change any of these view options if you want, but showing it against black is actually going to be what shows you the most flaws so it's easy to spot out what you need to fix. Now the last thing is um, this output settings don't change anything here. Um, it's going to ignore anything you do here because it actually does this on its own. That I'll just demonstrate here. I'm just going to hit OK. So it makes this um, color fix layer which is the decontaminate colors but it puts it on its own separate layer and it puts it at 50% opacity by default. I'm, I'm going to um, show this color background. It outputs a black color background again so you can see any flaws easier. So this um, color fix layer, if I turn this off, you see it helps a little bit on those edges get rid of some of that white glowing. So by default it's 50%. You can use it more if you want. And then it also, if you did the um, defined hair area, it puts that in the, a mask here, so the color fix only applies to the hair. You can undo that if you want, which will apply it to the entire image. And so there's two things that this hair area does. One, you can see there's more feathered edges. The edges are feathered here more than they are against um, the edges of the other areas. That's the first thing it does. And it also um, puts a mask on the color fix layer, so that's only happening to that area. Now the last thing you have is a manual color fix and that is where you could grab a brush tool if I use the alt key on Windows or option on Mac you can select the color of the hair for example and paint in. You're actually really not seeing too much happen there. Now I'm going to change the color just to make it more obvious. So if you had something that needed the color fixed, let's move this to 100%. I'm going to, um, let's set a set it to red for example. So you see we can paint in and you're painting color in and since it's in color blend mode it's not affecting the detail it's just painting color in and then you have control of the opacity as well. And of course I wouldn't use red normally I would um, use the color of the hair but since I don't really see a lot that needs fixed there there's really nothing we could see without changing the color to something like red. Oh, last thing too I'll point out is if this blend mode is not working correctly to where you're seeing the colors don't work quite right. If you're in CC 2019, you may have to um, go into your preferences here and under the performance, you may have to um, check this legacy compositing on. Now, on some computers I've seen where that's needed, on some it's not. I don't really know why yet, but I do know it is a bug in Photoshop CC 2019.0.0. That is a bug in there. And I actually reported a bug fix with Adobe along with quite a few other people. So if you see that color blend mode doesn't work right, make sure to check that legacy compositing on. There's actually six blending modes that don't work right when the bug is affecting the system. Um, I believe it's the darker color and the lighter color. And then these four down here, the hue, saturation, color, and luminosity. All six of those, when this bug um, is in effect, all six of those don't work right. And this particular computer I'm working on, that bug is only there some of the time but not always and I've not figured out what's causing it yet but I'm assuming Adobe is going to fix that in the next release so um, right now we're in CC 2019 um, version 20.0.0 .0. I highly anticipate once that last number flips to a 1 that bug in Photoshop is going to go away. Anyway thanks for watching and if you're interested at all in the image extract HTML panel please be sure to visit our website that is pixnub.com. Thank you.